Imagine being able to reduce stress and at the same time, open up your mind to peace and serenity with just one practice. This is what can happen with meditation. I am sure you are aware of how powerful meditation can be as a way to combat rising stress levels in our modern lives. But what do you know about Hamsa meditation? Hamsa meditation is one of the most effective types of meditation, yet very few people know or practice it properly. This powerful practice might be what you need to make your meditation sessions more powerful and effective. It is that transformative. Stay with us as we reveal five crucial tips for Hamsa meditation, and be sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for a free giveaway. Before we jump right in, what is meditation? Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines it as to engage in mental exercise, such as concentration on one's breathing or repetition of a mantra for the purpose of reaching a heightened level of spiritual awareness. Meditation has proven scientific benefits in reducing stress and anxiety. It is also proven to improve the mental health of those suffering from depression and periods of low moods. A study from the National Institute of Health, which taught mindfulness therapies, including meditation to adults with diagnosed depressive disorder, reported a huge reduction in physical and mental symptoms of depression. Here is another surprising benefit of meditation. It has also been known to improve attention spans. This may be another reason why more schools are now encouraging students to practice it. Did you know that just 10 minutes of meditation a day over an eight-week period is proven to improve memory and attention span in 15-year-olds and above? Another study also showed meditation may also improve age-related memory loss. Organized by Dharma Khalsa for the National Institute of Medicine, participants in the study were taught curtain kriya meditation, which focuses on a chant and a corresponding finger motion to allow focused thoughts. The participants showed improved performance on neuropsychological testing. Meditation may also have a role to play in fighting addiction. Through mental discipline and focus, meditation has all the tools to help with addiction. Used especially in the cases of food-based addictions, meditation can be used to defeat urges and retrain the mind to focus on other things. It is definitely easy to see why so many people worldwide are big fans. Meditation is designed to gently free us from the stresses of life, giving us an opportunity to reflect, accept, and make peace. Once we become aware of our own journey through life, we can become our own teachers, guiding ourselves through sometimes difficult situations with the power of our mind. Meditation is often practiced alongside yoga to help promote the growth of your own spiritual being and assist in attaining nirvana, a key belief from the Buddhist faith, which tells us of a transcendent state of being away from suffering, anxiety, and worries, a sense of complete peace, serenity, and tranquility. This is how to get going. You can start with a simple mantra, but what are mantras? Mantras are words, sayings, or phrases that are designed to give inner focus and help us connect to our sacred selves. Traditionally, mantras are in the ancient Indian language of Sanskrit, but you can use English ones too. A good English one would be love. When we use these mantras to create a calming moment, we have the opportunity to use that moment as meditation. And meditation gives us the opportunity to transform ourselves and our responses to things around us. Let's think about Hamsa. Hamsa means, I am that. I'm here, I'm connected to the divine. Try it out. Take some deep breaths, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Ham on the inhale, saw on the exhale. Imagine you're running a race. You're tired, your legs hurt. You're getting a blister from your new running shoes. You're all out of water. You're ready to give up. But why not try Hamsa? Ham as you breathe in, saw as you breathe out. Now look at you. You're in control of your breathing. You're in control of the pace. You're in control of your connection with the divine. And you can draw energy from them to power yourself forward. 
Hamsa teaches us that we are never alone. We can push ourselves forward through any event or situation. And we have so much power in our minds if we just learn to unlock it within ourselves. Often linked with the graceful swan who sits on the water without getting her feathers wet. Hamsa is to remind us that we can connect with a higher power and draw on aspects of that into our daily lives. The Hindu philosophy Advaita Vedanta regards the swan as the perfect symbol of how humanity should live, floating through life with ease and spirituality. For beginners, it is a good idea to follow more traditional practices when starting your journey with Hamsa meditation. Let's look at the basics of meditation. First, awareness. Be aware of the present moment. Yes, there are distractions, sounds, and smells. And there may be things on your mind that are hard to stop thinking about. Make a strong intention to let go of all distractions before you begin and give yourself a time frame. This can be increased as you master the skills of meditation. Second, quiet your mind. Being able to let go of your present surroundings is one thing, but what about letting go of the negativity in your mind? Having a negative headspace is very damaging to mental health and physical well-being, as well as being a huge barrier to meditation. Let go of negativity, doubt, worry, and judgment. Try to let your mind become empty and open. Be patient with yourself as this may take time to master. Don't worry if you don't get it overnight. A great way to start is by pausing your mind just for a minute at a time. Third, focus your mind. Now that you have quieted your mind, it's time to give it some focus. Using mantras is a simple way to get that focal point. Inhale and exhale deeply whilst chanting or breathing your mantra. Breathe in peace and calmness, breathe out negativity and fear. Fourth, acknowledgement. Through the path of meditation, we can learn to acknowledge our true selves. We will learn our thought patterns, our mental processes, which parts of ourselves we love, and which parts we like a little less. Accept yourself in all your forms and make the intention to work on the things you dislike. And fifth, be open. Remember to be open to the transformation that will take place within you once you start connecting to higher consciousness. You will feel different, enlightened, motivated, at peace, and more accepting. You can use this in your everyday life to benefit yourself and others, as well as improve your physical and mental health. Before we continue, we would like to give you a free gift of our book, The Ultimate Manifestation Guide. Inside the book, you will discover 15 secrets to help you manifest your dream life faster. Here at Mindset Flow, we are committed to helping you live your best and most fulfilling life. So get your free digital copy today by simply clicking the link in the description. Let's continue on. Here is a short guide to up-leveling your Hamsa meditation. Find a comfortable place on the floor where you won't be disturbed. Spread out a comfortable blanket and sit in the lotus position. You should make sure that your spine is straight and you have opened your chest in order to take proper deep breaths. Doesn't it feel amazing when we actually open up our chest and breathe properly? Let your breathing follow its natural rhythm. Don't try and force a specific pattern or speed of breathing. This will require too much focus. And all you should be focusing on now is connecting to a higher consciousness. Close your eyes and let your breathing flow naturally and peacefully. Now that you have your breathing right, try to inhale and in your mind, say ham. When you exhale, release with sa. Your voice should be barely audible. You should be breathing the words, not directly speaking them. On inhaling, make sure your chest is open and you breathe into your diaphragm, filling your lungs to capacity. As you exhale, expel the breath with a calm and focused force using your stomach to push out the air. This will become a calming pattern after a few breaths. Imagine a circle of light around you, enveloping you in a bubble of peace and serenity. Any physical tension you have carried over the past few days, weeks, or even months 
will gradually leave your body as you breathe in and out. Meditation can look many different ways. You might not have any idea that someone is meditating. Meditation can be highly personal or it can follow a more uniform approach. For Hamsa meditation, we recommend you form a mudra with your hands. Mudra is a traditional hand position adopted by yogis, which is essentially yoga for the hands. Here are two mudras which you can try. First, the chin mudra. This mudra is rooted in Hinduism and is usually what pops into your mind when you think of traditional meditation or yoga. Place your hand on each respective thigh, form an O with your thumb and index fingers, and extend the rest of your fingers outwards. Straighten your arms, but keep your chest forward. If you journey into Hinduism, you will learn that this position is known to represent the pyramid, which is a monument of great strength, as well as having a fascinating message in the positioning of the fingers. The thumb represents a higher power, the fingers represent the individual, with the O that is formed, signifying a bind of the higher consciousness and the person meditating. Second, the Buddhist mudra. This mudra is known as the Dhyana mudra, again referencing pyramids. This time you should place your hands on your lap, one on top of the other, with the two thumbs touching one another to form a pyramid shape. Links to symbolism and power in meditation are abundant and all center on connecting us to higher consciousness. Start off with 30 to 60 minutes a day. You will soon find it habit forming. At the end of your meditative state, it's so important to re-enter your day in a gentle way. Express gratefulness for your meditation and the connection it gave you to higher energy. Don't jump straight back into vacuuming, working, or running after the kids. Breathe deeply and slowly rise to a standing position. Stretch, take a drink of water, and reflect on how you are feeling. Think about it this way. If you have just run a marathon, you wouldn't just dash right into the next one immediately afterward. Congratulate yourself. Meditation is awesome self-care. Anytime you nourish your body, mentally or physically, is a wonderful moment. Make the intention to meditate again very soon. Meditation results are so personal. Some of us may experience an energy boost and feeling of refreshment, while others may feel so calm and relaxed that they become sleepy. It's a good idea to plan your meditation time. The beginning of the day is great for those who feel energetic and refreshed afterward, and the evening may be better for those who feel cleansed during the day and ready to recharge with sleep. You may find it beneficial to journal about each meditation session you have. This can be useful in tracking your progress as well as setting goals, such as increasing the time you spend in a meditative state. It may also help you to understand your distractions and work on limiting them for next time. Did you find this video helpful? If so, please share it with your family and friends. The more people understand how life-changing meditation can be, the better our world will be. Now that you can see how life-changing Hamsa meditations can be, we would love to hear from you. Do you have any words of wisdom on meditation? Or maybe any tips for living a more fulfilling life? Let our community know by commenting below. And before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and also remember to grab your free gift by clicking the link on the description below. Thanks for watching and have a day filled with peace.